Hi everyone, welcome to Role Changers in Tech by German Tech. My name is Anna Yukiko Bickenbach and I'm the event and program manager here. Today we're going to be talking about a very exciting gadget and um, how a gaming gadget can help uh, social inclusion. Um, as you know, World Changers in Tech is by German Tech where we look at entrepreneurs and startups and innovative stories that are making the world a better place. These are always underlined by our SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. In this case, we're looking at SDG 3, good health and well-being, as well as 9, industry, innovation and infrastructure, and 10, reduced inequalities, which we're excited about. And as you guys can tell from all of our audience that is trickling in right now live, and uh, as well as our YouTube friends <laughs> up here as a camera as well, we moved our studio and changed our studio around because this is gonna be a very interactive uh, live event, which I'm very much looking forward to. And I think at this point, we can start with our field belt from gaming gadget to social inclusion, role changes in tech webcast. So I'm gonna say hello, Carsten. Hello, Anna. Thank you for having me. Why don't we go ahead and start? Tell us first uh, who you are, what you're doing at field belt, and then we'll mm -hmm. go into the founding story of how field belt came to be. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I'm the business development manager at field belt, but how it is with a little startup, just of seven people, I'm basically responsible for anything and nothing at the same time. <laughs> but today, yeah, I'm here to represent us. And um, it is the fuel belt that I just brought with you. It's the name giving device. We've developed that uh, like two and a half years ago. We uh, founded the company then one and a half years ago. And today we are here and um, we can take a look at it. Shall we already do that? Well, well, no. well what was, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what sorry. Was, what, it's so it's excited. excitement <laughs> of the studio. What was the reason for actually inventing it? Like what was the initial idea? Well, yeah, the, the initial idea was something totally different than what we do today. Mm -hmm. um, it was invented by Jens. Jens is now 86, I guess. And he's a former engineer for speakers from Blaupunkt. Huh? And he invented the fuel belt technology to enhance the emotional experience when listening to music. Because he had the feeling that there's nothing changing about speakers anymore for mm -hmm. like several decades. A speaker is a speaker is a speaker and that's it. Uh, so he came up with the idea, with the principle of the field belt. And um, from there on, we developed our prototypes, presented it to the world last year, and people wanted to do everything with it. And here we are, <laughs> talking and, about everything. And uh, because we always love to have this entrepreneurship side to it, creating the prototype, how long, so how long did that take from conception of the idea until you felt ready for it to be tested by a mass or how long mm. did that take? Mm, actually not that long. It was three or four months in total. Oh, three or four months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was the rapid success behind that, that it only took? Um, first of all, there is the, uh, the, the, the skills of just Jens. He, he already knew what to do and he basically created everything. It was just way too large. When he okay. showed up with it, it was just like in, in, in wooden boxes of this size and everything. So the biggest um, obstacle here was to make it small enough to all fit into a belt. Mm -hmm. And therefore, two of our stakeholders of the company are already proven and experienced industrials from Berlin. So we had everything. We had the facilities, we had the people, the knowledge. So we could just scale it down and create the first prototypes. When you said he showed up, where did he show up to? Like, did he pitch... <laughs> Pitch it to his friends, or did he actually come to some form of like engineering yeah. meetup? Or no, not at all. I, I, yeah, this is this is just some almost an urban myth. It, it, basically, he rocked up in a bank and said, "Hey, I need money for my project." And the guy in the bank, which is now my boss, Benjamin, said, "Oh, that looks cool. Let's make a company out of this." Ah. He quit his job, and they created the company, and uh, here we are. See, those are the so those are the actual hidden gems that we really like to hear about, like you know yeah. how founders find themselves, and okay, great for them. So now we're here, and um, before we get to showing the uh, prototype, you guys are also crowdfunding right now, right? Mm -hmm. And this crowdfunding would enable what with the prototype we're going to be looking at? 
I'm not sure if I got that question. So the, the you have a crowdfunding yeah. campaign right now. And yeah. the crowdfunding campaign is to fund uh, every every owner who buys into it to have one in the end. Yeah. Or is it like there's another added business arm or business idea behind the crowdfunding? Mm, well, of course, the crowdfunding, in the end, it finances the whole company. So everything we do in the future will be based on that. Mm -hmm. And um, there are, yeah, I, I think I know where you're trying to go to. Um, I mean, there is the, the, the pure entertainment factor to all of this. But also at the same time, the field belt itself can do a lot for people who are not able to hear, for the deaf community all over the world. And uh, since this takes a lot of development and mm. improvement for those people and with public funding and all the stuff like that, of course, yeah. every crowdfunding yeah. um, pledge you do would help us as well. Okay, because that's what we're going to be talking about more in depth later is the idea, or not the idea, accessibility, yeah. right? Reduce inequalities, inclusion. So we'll go on to that, but that's great. So we know that the crowdfunding is not just only for the device to have, but it's obviously supporting other efforts that you guys are working on. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do now, and we also wanna tell our audience viewing, this is gonna be super interactive. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and ask us so we can get Kasim to give us a direct answer, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but we'll do this as interactive as possible. And I'm actually looking forward to it because I've never actually had a gadget or tech gadget yet that we've been able to try out live or in a podcast. Okay. <laughs> so my challenge will be to uh, give back a good verbal story on how your feel belt, do it justice to really to tell the audience what it feels like. So how about we'll get started with this? Yeah, let's do this. So uh, yeah, thank, thank you for having me as your first time. <laughs> and we're now going to put something vibrating onto Anna. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Okay. So let's see, Kasim is out of the picture, he's going to get it. Yep, here Maybe we are. Just yeah. carefully. We'll be a bit careful as this is one of our 3D printed prototypes. This is the inner side of it with its uh, 10 impulse generators, the black bubbles you see here. Mm -hmm. And this is the actual front with the controlling unit. Um, so yeah. Let's get you into yeah. this. And the way you can imagine this, I'm going to cast it as uh, hooking me up right now. <laughs> it's a belt that I'm putting around my waist. It's fairly lightweight. And as he mentioned, there's these vibrators going around on the inside. Hey, don't suck in the belly. Yes, Just and relax. I gotta <laughs> relax my tummy. Yeah, so it's that's... there. It's really lightweight. It's around my waist right now. I see some lights that are blinking. There's some little outputs probably for audio. Yeah. Um, but okay. Um, there's an output and an input there. Um, the output goes to the headphones. We'll just strap these on in a minute. And there's also an input with an audio jack because uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to connect my phone via Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. But anywhere else where you are restricted with Bluetooth connection, maybe with your computer, with your PlayStation or whatever, um, you can just hook in, uh, in any audio jack, the 3.5 millimeter, and you're good to go. Okay. So we'll do Bluetooth now. Get here. And where is I'm already anticipating bird? that something's coming, so that's why <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm silent right now. <laughs> so let's connect you with the headphones. Sorry, I'm in the background. This goes there. Cable to the left. And you already said my challenge is going to be not to necessarily talk louder because I can't hear anything. <laughs> but I'm going to just react as instinctively as possible. All right. And as you can see, we're just using Spotify. So we're not using any special audio signal, nothing in particular. Any audio signal will just do. And we will take something uh, from... Uh, let's... Now I'm curious what's on the playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the favorite song I was going to pick is suddenly missing. So this is this is the the interesting there part is, is even though you think about gaming, it's also music. I mean, entertainment, right? So it's yeah. everything from music to movies. Like yeah, if I'm watching absolutely. something, okay. Anything multimedia content goes into the belt, huh? and uh, here we go. Oh wow. 
So I'm hearing strings and I can hear the bass and the whole bass is vibrating around me and the strings are kind of <laughs> congruent to what I'm feeling across my tummy. I don't know how loud I'm talking, but I actually, <laughs> I feel the music vibrating through me, which is really cool. It's very nice music, by the way. Yeah, thank and you. And you almost <laughs> feel like you're in front of an orchestra and you're literally in front of Backheim's speakers, <laughs> you know, and it's vibrating through you. Oh, it's basically your private disco. And uh, what people now might be hearing is a bit of rattling from our prototype. So this is just related to this being a 3D printed prototype that's taking, been taking apart all the time and new technology in there. So uh, don't be irritated by that. <laughs> you couldn't hear anything. Kasim said something, but I did not hear <laughs> anything that was being said. I just mentioned the prototype and the rattling coming from it. Ah, okay. Because people could hear that in the in the audio now. Oh, so maybe they can hear it. Oh, they can hear it. Oh, yeah, everyone yeah. can hear what I'm hearing. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I feel it. It's great. I mean, I think you can <laughs> sense by my face what was happening. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, let's talk about... This is one feature, like one feature that, you know... To show to showcase how it works. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about now the topic of inclusion. Yeah. So how is this helping? How we talked about that deaf, mm -hmm. deaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, since the belt is so precise, because you could feel the difference between the instruments, mm -hmm. and when we switch the belt into gaming mode, then it will be even in stereo, so you would be able to tell apart the direction of noises, whether it's coming from your left or from your right. Mm -hmm. And due to these features, it even enables deaf people to recognize what is going on. I mean, right now we are limiting those people to reading subtitles. Right. So they are sitting in front of their telly and they can see mm, monsters roaring, mm, intense music is playing. Yeah. And they're just sitting there like, aha, that's it. Yeah. And with this belt, everything of this atmosphere that they are lacking is coming back to them. They can tell apart the silent parts of a movie from the noisy, uh, busy ones. They can tell apart the deep voice of a villain. I mean, the villain has a deep voice on purpose. The, the director and everybody, they, they meant to do something. They meant to express something with this. And all of this is missing for them. And with the feel belt, they can get it back. So they can tell apart the deep voice of the villain from the high-pitched screams of the lady in danger. They can tell if the car is going from the left to the right or vice versa and all this stuff. And um, this adds so much to their world of experience and reception. Mm -hmm. And um, I've just been with a German YouTuber girl, Cindy Klink, mm -hmm. very recently, some weeks ago. And she gave it a go with the feel belt as well for basically everything. She did music with it. Uh, she was on the Nintendo Switch, on an Xbox. And she's also, she also watched a horror movie with it. Which she said is an issue for her because her boyfriend, he's just able hearing on a regular level. He loves to watch horror movies. And for her, they are just dead boring. Because she's just it's sitting so there, yeah, staring <laughs> at the dark screen. And just sometimes there's an ugly face showing up. Mm -hmm. That's it mm -hmm. for her. But with this feel belt, it's pretty funny. You can look it up on the internet. Um, there's a video of her where she sits on her couch. And she's watching, I think, Slenderman or something like this. And there's a very quiet scene and she's just sitting there cranking everything up. I can't feel anything. I can't feel anything. And suddenly this thing just rushes through the picture for a second, for the blink of an eye with an yeah noise doing. And she was jumping on her couch. <laughs> it was so great. So suddenly she was in the movie as a deaf person. Yeah. She could feel what the, what the director tried to do to the audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's just great. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, that also helps probably when they're gaming. I'm assuming to have yeah. a spatial recognition of where they are or like yeah. if something's coming from left or right. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, for instance, when she was playing on the Switch, she was playing Mario Kart, I guess. And in this game, there is already a rumble signal, a force feedback. But this is just meant to, to display whenever something really action actionish. <laughs> is happening and she was just there and she was okay yeah i could feel like i was going over the bumps in the in the rumble controller itself she was sitting there 
oh, there's music in it. I didn't know there's music in the game. Oh, and now I can suddenly, I can feel up when I, I can feel when I pick up an item and stuff like that, or when I'm shooting at someone. So, um, yeah, everything was just coming back to her. It was way, way more immersive for her and she really enjoyed it. Okay. Let's talk about, which I think is interesting, when you guys were also, you know, when you go through creating a product and you're ideating and you have to have like test groups, did you have various different types of people coming into the testing? And did you have like, an, like a group of deaf people actually come in and give you feedback to it? Or was it so instinctively perfect the way it worked that you didn't have to do much like so the question is more like how did you do the testing with all the different users to no. find out you know where do you need to put a vibration or where do you need to put another knob yeah well actually that's the thing that's still on our list to do what you have right now is just how we invented it like two years ago okay just with the little evolutionary yeah. steps mm -hmm. with making it smaller and everything but so far we didn't do anything to especially fit it to the deaf community. Ah, okay, so, so it's like they nice really thing. just appreciate it like it is. Of course, there's room for improvement. We are talking about other uh, other settings, for instance, maybe adding like um, suspenders mm -hmm. that go up your chest. So especially in live access, um, it will be much more precise in telling apart left and right. Okay. Because right now, when we start with the with the low frequencies in the back, the high frequencies go up to the front, and it's a bit difficult to tell apart front left and front right mm -hmm. with the high notes, mm -hmm. because okay. that's very close in the center. It's mm -hmm. totally fine for game immersion, uh, immersion and everything, but if you really depend on it to being able to tell if the if like the the tram the train is ringing from the right or from the left. Mm -hmm then we need to be even more precise. And this could, for example, be done with those suspender straps just going up and down here. So you can really feel, okay, there's a tram going, coming from the right or from the left. Oh, great. So that gives us a really gl good glimpse of the future of like what is still to come yeah. and where you guys are going. Um, okay, why don't we, let's also continue with the other great kind of health aspects or innovations that you found you can use the field belt for. No. Which I found very interesting when I was talking to Sebastian and I heard about, you know, what you guys are, are doing. But then we kind of talked about uh, areas of uh, rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So why don't you bring take us there? Yeah, well, um, basically the belt helps with everything where sound is involved. Mm -hmm. it, it increases the, the reaction to sound, how you, how you get immersed into your sound. And um, sound is used in very different uh, areas and fields. For instance, in meditation, relaxation and even therapy. So whenever people use sound or music or very special sounds, to, to increase their therapy or even if the therapy is totally based on sound, the feel belt helps just with increasing the level of how the sound inflicts our body and body and brain. Could we actually, do you have anything like meditation with you on the Spotify? Like, could we do something? As you're explaining, can I do like a meditation? All right. So the question was, sorry, how, do, how does heal, sound can heal? Yeah, well, um, the sound, yeah, the, how, how does sound heal? To be honest, that is above my, above my knowledge. I'm not that sound healing expert. What we do know is that the feel belt helps with increasing just how efficient everything is related to sound. And we could even put that to a test when we had a neurologist with us. Mm -hmm. um, she did an EEG, so she was scanning the brain waves. And we had uh, someone testing this, um, listening to the same piece of neurologic healing music with the belt and without. And on this EEG, we could really show how listening to the same piece of music with a feel belt not only increased the level of waves for the parts we already knew, we could see in the, in the use case without the feel belt, but it even activated brain areas that weren't active before. So the hint here is that the feel belt might even help with activating unknown emotions that you have that you have in there that you for some reason put away you bend them from your consciousness and the feel belt might even help with breaking up those barriers and bringing stuff back that was already gone. Okay, I could see that happening. 
And um, yeah, sorry, w one thing that comes to my mind uh, whenever we talk about this is maybe some of you guys have already heard about that. It was some years ago now when they had this experiment in a retirement home mm -hmm. for demented people, people with dementia. Um, they had the experiment of bringing uh, an iPod with music from their past, from their youth. And the moment they put on the headphones onto those people who could barely, they, could, they, they didn't realize, uh, recognize their, their relevance, their kids and, mm -hmm. and stuff like this. And the moment they put on the music, everything broke loose in them and the memories kept came, uh, coming back. They could suddenly tell stories that were long gone. They could uh, recognize people again because of the, the, the sound in their head just breaking down those barriers. And for instance, stuff like that could be enhanced with a fuel belt. Mm -hmm. And this is where you guys would obviously also in the future, I think I heard maybe uh, work with some universities or are in talks with them to actually see what other yeah. effects the fuel belt can have. Absolutely. It's an institute from Stuttgart where oh. the neurologist was coming from and um, they will help us in further research on what to do with it, how to use it properly and uh, about all the benefits. Okay, so we're going to see if um, our audience has any more questions for Carsten regarding the fuel belt. Um, and you, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the crowdfunding, uh, where you guys are at, you know, how long is it going to be? Where can we find you guys while some of maybe some questions trickle in? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, actually, we're doing the second round of crowdfunding now. Um, we had a, kick, a Kickstarter campaign by May and June. Mm -hmm. We finished that with 300% uh, of our uh, goal that we were targeting oh, for. Congratulations. Because that's <laughs> Thank all you. That's a great goal. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that was almost 300 units sold through that. And now we are on Indiegogo. Um, and there we are using uh, the in-demand service, which we can basically run as long as we want to. Um, but we are going to shut it down as soon as we have our own web shop. Until then, you can help us there and you will get a huge um, discount on all of this. Um, the final listing price for this belt when it comes to the shelves and to the web shops will be 329 euros. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now in crowdfunding, we are talking about 219 euros, everything including German tax. So depending on where you German come from. He said German tax, not German tech. Just because I heard German tech. Sorry, German no, tax. in German tax. <laughs> yeah, the taxes. Um, yeah, so depending on where you're coming from, that might be a bit more or a bit less. Okay, and our German tech fans also get a, a special off, right? Is that correct? Yeah, when they of go course. To Indiegogo. Yeah, we can we can do that. So uh, most likely we will put the link to the YouTube video. Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, we're we're happy and proud to present you the opportunity to get your fuel belt at even uh, just 199 euros. Uh, we will put the link to the YouTube video then. Uh, and if you click on it, you will find a special deal called German Tech Feel Belt. Um, and you can get it for the cheapest ever. Wonderful. Well, I, with that, I would say, Kassen, thank you so much for bringing the Feel Belt in and giving me the experience of the Feel Belt. And we will be, uh, we're happy to see how the journey uh, continues. When is the web shop plan to open? Um, I can't tell 100% for the web shop, but we plan on shipping the units yeah. that are already sold and that will be sold through Indiegogo yeah. by the mid of October. Okay. And before we go, just one more uh, question for our entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs out there, because we always want to learn something. Uh, is there one thing you can think about that you learned um, working for a startup? Something that you take with you as a lesson? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. There is. Um, and the one thing is communication is key. No matter how good you think your idea is, no matter how well you uh, try to explain it, people will always come up with different ideas. What started as a sound uh, device is now everything. It is sim racing, it is sound healing, it is accessibility for the deaf. And it is just because we listen to people. And it has been basically like this for every startup I worked for in the last 10 years. Um, people out there have the best ideas for your own products. Yeah. Talk to them, ask them and take in their ideas. Thank you for that wonderful insight. And with that, I say Dankeschön. Thank you for having me. Danke sehr. <laughs> and we say goodbye and hope you guys have a great rest of the week. 
<lacht> bye, bye. Tschüss.